Right, David Can here with another question from the Question Bank in topic 8.2. Uh, we're looking at energy transfer and the Stefan Boltzmann Law. Uh, first, we just have to state the Stefan Boltzmann Law, uh, which is in the data booklet. It's just that the power emitted, the total power emitted as black body radiation by any object, is equal to its emissivity times the Stefan Boltzmann constant, sigma. Uh, times the surface area of the object, times the temperature of the object in Kelvin to the power of 4. So this is the power of black body emissions E is the emissivity Sigma is the Stefan Boltzmann constant And uh, keep going. Uh, a is the cross is or so is, is. Let me start again. There, A is the surface area, and T is the temperature. So, anytime you're asked to state or define some sort of rule or law that has an equation associated with it. It's a good idea to state the equation and define all the terms in it, because oftentimes that's enough to get you full credit. But it isn't always, so it's a good idea to back that up with a little bit of uh, text, a little bit of a, a worded statement. And we can say that the uh, power emitted by black body radiation well, we know that it's equal to e sigma a t to the fourth. Uh, but sigma is a constant, so it's not really an interesting part of the relationship. And e is the emissivity, which we often just assume is 1. So that's kind of a constant as well. Uh, so to get at the heart of what the Stefan Boltzmann relationship is telling us, it's telling us that the total power emitted by black body radiation, black body radiation is proportional to the surface area. And the temperature uh, to the fourth power of an object. So the power emitted by black body radiation by an object is proportional to the surface area of the object and the temperature. Uh, to the fourth power, which I should probably say in words. Okay. Uh, now we want to do something with the Stefan Boltzmann law. We have the following data about the Sun and the Earth. We have the distance between them, the radius of the Earth, the radius of the Sun, and the temperature of the Sun at its surface, uh, which is significantly different from the temperature at its core, but that's beside the point. Uh, use the data from the table to show that the power radiated by the sun is about this much. So let's basically use the Stefan Boltzmann law. We know that the power is the emissivity times the Stefan Boltzmann constant times the surface area times the temperature to the fourth power. We're not given the emissivity of the sun, so I can only assume that it's left up to us to assume that the sun is a perfect black body radiator, which is not totally accurate, but there's not really another way to go about this question. So we'll assume that the emissivity is 1. The Stefan Boltzmann constant is a constant. It's in your data booklet. Uh, it's 5.6 times 10 to the negative eighth. The surface area of the sun is not given. Instead, we're given the radius of the sun. And it's left up to you to remember from geometry that uh, the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. That's not in the data booklet. That's presumed knowledge. It's not even in the course. So you just have to know that geometric relationship. 4 pi r squared for the surface area of a sphere. Finally, the temperature is 5,800 Kelvin. We bring that to the fourth power. When we plug that into the calculator, we get uh, 4 times 10 to the 26 watts. 
All right, next up we want to calculate the solar power incident per unit area at a distance from the sun equal to the Earth's distance from the sun. So basically we're saying of the 4 times 10 to the 26 watts emitted by the sun, how many of them reach each square meter where the Earth is? So what we're going to do is we're going to take that power and divide it by the number of square meters in that shell around the sun. So here's the sun, and it emits power in all directions. And the total power is 4 times 10 to the 26 watts. Here's the Earth, drawn a little bit large and a little bit close, but that's OK. And it exists on this shell, made up of a certain number of square meters. All of the power emitted by the sun has to pass through that shell, and we want to find how many watts reach each of those square meters in that shell. Uh, so we'll say that the intensity, which is the power per uh, unit area, is equal to 4 times 10 to the 26 watts divided by the area of that shell, which is uh, the surface area of a sphere again, 4 pi r squared. This time r is the distance from the sun to the earth, which was given as 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters uh, squared. Uh, put that in your calculator, you get 1,400 watts per square meter, reaching each square meter on the surface of the Earth, or where the Earth is. Uh, part 3, we want to find, or it says the average power absorbed by per unit area of the Earth is 240 watts per square meter, which is significantly less than what we calculated here. Uh, we want to state two reasons why uh, there's this disagreement. Why does each square meter of the actual Earth's surface get less power than what's passing through the shell where uh, the Earth is? Uh, the, there's two reasons, well there's many reasons, but two of the biggest reasons are that, cursor please, yes. They are that uh, only half the Earth's surface area faces the sun at any given time. Uh, because the Earth is a sphere and not like a disk, and even if it were a disk, it would still have a backside, the whole Earth is not getting power at the same time. It's only the cross-sectional area of the Earth that receives power at this rate and that total power is divided across the total surface area, which is much larger than its cross-sectional area. Um, so basically, because half of the Earth is pointing away, it's not receiving any power. So the average power received per square meter on Earth is lower. Uh, the other major reason is that the Earth's atmosphere and weather reflect some of the light or some of the power. Uh, since we're talking about the average power received at the Earth's surface, any power reflected by the atmosphere before it reaches the surface isn't counted as power received by the surface. So even though we have lots of power entering the space where the Earth is, a significant fraction of it is reflected back into space. Uh, next, we want to show that the value for power absorbed per unit area, 240 watts per square meter, is consistent with an average equilibrium temperature for the Earth of about 255 Kelvin. Uh, what we're saying here is that the Earth will have an equilibrium temperature when the power received by the Earth is equal to the power emitted by the Earth, so that there's no rise or fall in total energy of the Earth. Um, the power received by the Earth is coming from the Sun, that's the 240 watts per square meter. The power emitted by the Earth is its blackbody radiation. So we're suggesting that 240 watts per square meter multiplied by the cross, or sorry, multiplied by the surface area of the Earth for the total power absorbed by the Earth is equal to the total power emitted by the Earth, the Stefan-Boltzmann law. Uh, the emissivity of the Earth times the Stefan-Boltzmann constant times the surface area of the Earth again times the temperature of the Earth to the fourth power, and it's that temperature that we want to solve for. Uh, notice that the surface area of the Earth exists on both sides, and we can cancel it out. So even though we were given the radius of the Earth, we're not going to wind up using it in this question. It's there to help you if you need it, but you don't need it. It's faster without it. 
Uh, we'll solve this for the temperature. That's going to be the fourth root of 240 divided by uh, the emissivity times the Stefan Boltzmann constant. Once again, we're not given the emissivity of the Earth, so it's left up to us to assume that it's 1, uh, which is not a great assumption, but we're out of options. So we'll just divide by 1 times the Stefan Boltzmann constant, 5.6 times 10 to the negative 8. And that gives us 256 Kelvin. Uh, notice that it's 256 Kelvin, not 256 degrees Kelvin. Kelvin is not a degreed unit. Next up, we want to explain by reference to the greenhouse effect why the average temperature of the surface of the Earth is not 255 Kelvin. Uh, that's quite cold. Uh, so we're quite happy that it isn't. It's warmer than that. So basically the idea here is that greenhouse gases in the atmosphere uh, absorb infrared radiation emitted by the Earth's surface. That's that black body radiation that the Earth is emitting. Uh, so when it leaves the Earth's surface, that black body radiation, some of it gets absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, so we should say the atmosphere absorbs some of the infrared radiation emitted by the Earth's surface and re-radiates it in random directions, including back to the Earth. Uh, what this means is that even though the Earth's surface is emitting energy at a certain power, uh, some of it is coming back. Uh, so for the Earth to reach an equilibrium temperature, the energy that's leaving the atmosphere has to be equal to 240 watts per square meter. So the Earth has to be emitting energy at a higher rate than that so that some of it can bounce back and still 240 gets through. So that means that the Earth's temperature has to be higher than 255 so that its black body radiation rate can be higher. Uh, so what we might want to say here is that this means that uh, the Earth's temperature, surface temperature, needs to be higher so that the radiation that does escape the atmosphere has a power of 240 watts per square meter. Lastly, suggest why the burning of fossil fuels may lead to an increase in the temperature of the surface of the Earth. Uh, this is the anthropogenic greenhouse effect. The idea here is that uh, burning fossil fuels releases more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere than would already exist. Uh, presumably, this will cause, uh, will lead to an increase in the rate of energy leaving the Earth's surface, or an increase the rate of energy being reabsorbed and re-radiated. Uh, meaning that, therefore, uh, the Earth will have to emit an even higher power uh, of radiation in order to uh, reach a balance with the energy coming in from the sun. So therefore, the Earth's temperature will have to rise further. so that its black body radiation uh, or so that the fraction of the black body radiation 